Hey everybody, Blendmaster here with another tutorial, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this cool abstract wallpaper inside a blender. And I'm actually going to be showing you guys an interesting technique on how to create this outline for this shape. And we can use this method for creating the actual abstract shape itself, as well as the outline, to create many different variations of this wallpaper, like this one here, as well as these other shapes here. And you can also apply the same method for creating the outline to some generic shapes as well, such as a UV sphere. And it'll create just a bunch of cool different abstract wallpapers. So let's jump in a blender and get started. So the first thing we want to do is delete both the cube and the lamp. And I'm going to come over to the second layer so that we can create our abstract object over here. And we're actually going to be using meta balls to create these abstract objects. And that's because if we duplicate these uh, meta balls by pressing Shift D, you can see that depending on where it is, it sort of behaves like a fluid object and connects to the previous object. And with this property, we can create some pretty cool random shapes. So I'm just going to duplicate this one and move it up on the Z axis. And you really can do whatever you want with this step here because it really doesn't matter. The end result is going to look pretty cool no matter what shape you create. So I'm just going to do this sort of effect here, duplicate it like that. We can also duplicate these and scale them down a little bit so that you can create a random shape. So something like that maybe, move one down here. And yeah, that looks pretty good. You don't want to get it too complex in this scene because we're going to be decreasing the resolution of these objects anyways so that way it's not that complex. And I think this looks pretty good. So I'm just going to press A to select everything and we'll press Alt C to convert it to a mesh. And now that we have our mesh, I'm going to come over to the modifier tab here and give it a decimate modifier. And if we decrease this ratio to zero, you'll see that we get just a flat plane. And I'm going to decrease the or change this shading to flat so that we don't get that weird effect there. And if we hold down shift and then just drag up this ratio value, you can sort of see that our object is being built up from that triangle plane until we get our original object. And we don't want anything too complex because that'll sort of ruin the effect. But I think I'm going to go with something like 0 0.0125 maybe. I think that looks pretty good and I'm just going to apply this decimate modifier now. Now what we want to do is convert this to a curve so that we can bevel the edges and create that wireframe look. And if we tried to convert this to a curve right now you'll see that nothing happened. And that's because curve objects can only be used to create a 2D flat plane and then extrude that plane. It can't create a 3D object itself. So what we need to do is actually make sure that each of these faces in our object are separate from each other. And the easiest way I found to do that is to make sure in vertex select mode and then have all of them selected and press Alt E to bring up this extrude menu. Then we can extrude the individual faces and if we just right click it'll apply that action without actually moving any of the faces. Then we can press Ctrl I to invert our selection and just delete those vertices. Now if we take a look you'll see that each of these faces are disconnected from each other which is exactly what we want. So now I can tab out of edit mode and duplicate this so that we have one object for our inside and one for that outline. And I'll press Alt-C to convert it to a curve. And you can see that it's a curve now because of this icon here. That indicates that this object is a curve object. And this triangle icon here indicates that it's a mesh object. So with the curve object selected, we'll come over to these curve settings here. And under the bevel section, we want to increase the depth to about 0 0.05, or maybe even 0.1, I think, for this scene will work. And I'm going to increase the resolution to about 6, so it's nice and smooth. Also, change the shading to smooth. And if we zoom in, you might be able to notice, if we unhide our inside object, that it's not completely beveling entirely around the edge and that's because this fill type here is set to half so if we set that to full you'll see it looks a lot better we can unhide our other object now and I think that looks pretty good so now we can go back to our first layer to create our actual backdrop and I'm just gonna add in a plane 
and I'll zoom in here and tap into edit mode. And with these back two vertices selected, I'll extrude it along the z-axis by two units. Then I'll select these two vertices here and press Ctrl B to bevel it. And if you increase the middle mouse button or scroll up, you can increase the number of segments which will help round out this shape here. And I'm going to add in about 10 segments and then just left click to apply that action. Now with these vertices selected, I'm just going to extrude it along the y-axis. And I'll extrude these vertices along the z-axis. And by pressing A twice, I'll select everything and then scale it along the x-axis by 5 units. Now I'm going to tab out of edit mode and make sure the shading is set to smooth. And with our camera selected, I'll press Alt-G and Alt-R to clear its location and rotation. Then we can go to side view and orthographic mode. And I'll go to wireframe so we can actually see the outline of our object. I'm going to rotate our camera by negative 90 degrees and then just position it right behind our backdrop and slightly above the floor like that. Now I can go back to our camera view by pressing 0 on the numpad. And I'll go to solid view so we can see our actual backdrop. I'm just going to position our camera where I think will be best for our scene. So somewhere like that looks pretty good. And now if we press shift and left click on the second layer, we can see everything on the same viewport. I'm just going to select our abstract object and move it to the center of our scene and then scale it down by 0.25. Then from camera view, I'm just going to move it up on the z-axis so it's in the center of our scene. So if we press Shift-Z right now, everything's dark. And I also want to make sure we're in the Cycles engine, not the internal engine. And I'm going to make sure back our border is selected so it only renders what's in our camera view. I'm going to change the background to transparent. I'll just add in a simple HDR image to give us some basic lighting in our scene. So let's add in that. You can see it's starting to look a little bit better. And I'm going to open up a new window here for our node editor and I'll press N to get rid of that window. And with our backdrop object selected, I'll give it a new material. And instead of this diffuse shader, I'm going to add in a glossy shader. And I'm going to just plug that in, delete this diffuse shader. And I'm going to increase this roughness to about 0.5 so that the shading is a lot smoother. And I want to make it a pretty dark color. So let's decrease this value to about 0.25. I think that looks pretty good. So now I want to select our outline object and give it a new material. And this also is going to be another glossy shader. And we want to make sure the roughness for this is set to 0. So it's really reflective and looks almost like a metal. And I'm going to give it a goldish color. So let's just do that. Something like that. And maybe decrease the saturation about 0.5. And I think maybe adjust this hue value slightly. Something like that looks too yellowish. So I think that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to select our fill object here to give it a new material. And with this diffuse shader, we're actually going to mix it with a glossy shader. And this glossy shader, we want it to have a roughness of zero. We want both of these to have a pure white color. So let's add in our mix shader. And I'm actually going to use a Fresnel node to use as our factor for the mixing. Just like that. And now we can close this window here because we don't need to make any more materials. And if we take a look at this, our scene is pretty dull right now. So let's add in two area lamps. First, let's add in this one here. And I'm going to go to side view and move it so that it's above our camera like that. And from top view, I'm going to move it to this corner here. I'm also going to increase the size to about 5 so it's a lot bigger. And then from front view, I'll just rotate it so that it's pointing right at our abstract object. And from top view, I'll rotate it just like we did before. And you can see that this line does not go directly through our object. So what we need to do is press R and double tap Y so that we can rotate it along the local Y axis so that it does go through our object. Now I'll just press Shift D to duplicate our lamp. Press Alt R to clear its rotation. I'm just going to move it to the opposite side and move it down on the z-axis and then just rotate it again. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to rotate it on the local y-axis as well. And yeah, that looks pretty good. 
So now I'm going to increase this strength to something like 250. And for this lamp, I'll increase it to about 750. If we go to our camera view now, you can see that our scene looks a lot brighter and it looks much better. And if you want, you can adjust this depth to make it a little skinnier if you think it's too thick. I think 0.1 is actually pretty good for this scene. And if you don't like how your object looks, just select both the outline and the inside. And if we press R twice, it'll bring up this trackball rotation. So this will allow us to randomly rotate this and create a cool looking effect if you want. So I think that looks good. Maybe rotate it like that a little bit. And I'm just going to position it in the center of our scene, try to get it right about there. And I think that looks pretty good. So if we were to render this out right now, it would look pretty sharp and clean. But I think it would look even better if we added some depth of field. So what I'm going to do is add in an empty, plain axis, and from side view I'll just move it to the front of our object, and then from front view make sure it's aligned with that corner right there, and from top view, whoops, I'm just going to position it there. I think that looks pretty good. So now we can go to our camera, and under the camera settings we have this depth of field option, and for focus we'll just select our empty. And then we can increase the size value so that it adds in a blur towards the outside. And that's way too strong. I'm going to use something like 0.1. I think that looks the best. And now I'm just going to check the denoising feature here. And I'll increase the samples to about 200. And I'm going to render this out right now. I'll pause the recording and come back when it's done. Alright, so it's done rendering and it looks really good. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. One thing I just want to say though is that there's many different ways to create this effect. You could have also simply just gone into the modifier tab and added a wireframe modifier. And I've done this on a UV sphere so you could see what it would look like. You would just simply adjust this thickness value to whatever you want. But if we go to rendered view to take a look at this, you'll see that the edge is a lot sharper than what I wanted for our object here, which you can see is a lot smoother. And I couldn't figure out a way to actually smooth this out. I tried adding a subsurf modifier to it, but it didn't get the effect I was looking for. And I also tried switching the shading from flat to smooth. And that sort of worked, but if you take a look at this, you can see that there's a lot of dark artifacts around the edges of our object, which isn't what we wanted. So I've used my method on another UV sphere, so we can take a look at this. And you can see that we're getting that smooth effect that we want, and there's not as much of that black artifact around the edges like we had before. And also, since we separated all of these faces individually, if we add in a subsurf modifier to this shape, you can see that we also get some pretty cool uh, ring effects. Let's see. Hopefully it doesn't crash. And there we go. You can see that like with the same effect applied on just a simple UV sphere you get a completely different effect after adding that subsurf modifier and this looks really cool all on its own as well so that's one thing I just wanted to share there's many different ways I'm not saying this is the one and only way it's just one way I found that looks pretty good for the effect that I was going for so yeah that's pretty much it for this tutorial guys thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed and learned something new if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.